Okay, finding bearing walls part two. Um, the first video I did, I did bearing walls and I, it was for a single story dwelling. Now what if you have multiple stories? You have two or three story house and you want need to find whether a wall is bearing or not. Okay, so what are some of the clues for finding whether a bearing wall? A lot of it has to do with how far you have to span. Um, if the shorter spans, they're usually going to um, have joists span shorter distances because then the, the, the joists don't have to be as big. Okay, so on this diagram I show here, if this is only eight feet wide, you would probably want to run all of your joists that way so that they're only eight feet. Um, you could probably get away with a two by six instead of a two by eight, that kind of thing. All right. Now, then you're going to look at this section here. Well, this is it's 16 feet to here from here to here, so I could run my floor joists. These are 16 footers, so I could run them. I could run a beam here and then run these across to match up with that beam. Now, that would probably be the best way of doing it, but is that always the way that they do it? The answer would be no. Okay. Sometimes all the floor joists do not run in the same direction. So for whatever reason, maybe because of what's going on in the floor below, so if you're on the first floor and you're trying to find the direction of the joist so you can tear out a wall, well, you think, oh, well, if you have a, maybe if you had a wall running across here, then if they're, they could use that as a bearing wall and your floor joists would go that way, okay? So it, a lot of it depends on what the rooms are that are already there, okay? So first you want to look for the widths of the rooms. They usually like to go the shortest distance. And then the second thing is you're going to look at, okay, if this is 30 feet and there's a maybe because like let's say there's a hall under most of this down here then they could use one of those two walls as a bearing wall and then run there instead of going to 15 feet you you're going or excuse me instead of going 16 feet going this way you're only going 15 feet going the other direction so again it may vary so pay attention to widths and then pay attention to what's underneath this the rooms downstairs compared to the rooms upstairs okay so it may be able to switch them okay so here's an example if I had to put a beam here's my beam I put that beam across there and then I got this wall that's maybe part of a hall then this is going to be a load-bearing wall along with these two because all of this is sitting on top of that wall so that makes it a load bearing wall now if you wanted to take this wall out since the beam is already up here all you would have to do is put posts um, you'd have to figure out how far apart the posts would need to go but you, you would just put posts in there and then you can maybe open up a lot of it maybe not all of it but you could open up a good chunk of it if you took this wall out and then just added posts instead of the wall okay so you could do that now if if the this floor joist from above is just spliced over that wall then before you re, then before you uh, since there's no beam there you have to install a beam so you'd either have to install it underneath or you'd have to cut up into the floor and you would install it up into the floor and then post it from there. Put posts on the end so that you could have your open concept without dropping down your ceiling in the middle. Because if you put the post or the beam underneath, then you got that hanging down in your room. And that happened in my house and I don't like it. So, best thing to do is then shove them up, shove them up into the floor and then you can have a, your flat ceiling, okay? When, before you go taking this wall out, you have to build some temporary walls on each side to support the load while you do the work in the middle, okay? So, 
two things, basically what you look at, number one is you look for the shortest distance because that's usually the way, the way they go with the floor joist or ceiling joist. And then the second thing is, okay, they may swap it. Instead of going this way, they'll put a beam down the middle because there's a wall already there, so you don't have to double dip. And then you can run your floor joist in the opposite direction, okay? So we were asking, well, if you've got sheetrock up, how do you find out which way the, the floor joists are running without ripping a bunch of holes in the wall or whatever? Well, the easiest thing that I found to find which way the uh, floor joists are running, since they're nailed or screw with metal nails or screws, get a small magnet and just run it run it along and it'll attach itself to the head of the nail. And then once you've found a nail, then you can go, your spacings, you go 16 inches to the right or the left. So you go per, you're gonna go parallel to the wall to see where the nails are, and then you're gonna go over perpendicular to see if they're running in that direction. And you just use that little magnet, and all you have to do is when you find a nail, just put a little pencil mark on there that you can't barely see and then we'll tell you which direction the screws are running or the nails are running without having to rip anything down okay then you get a bunch of them in a row you know that there's a floor joist running that direction okay so it's pretty simple to determine which direction they're going all you need is a little one of those little pen magnets and you can find out where the um, where all the floor joists are running. You don't, if you, then you look at the lengths of them. You know, if it's less than 16 feet, they're probably running in that direction, okay? Anything over 16 feet is gonna have a beam in there someplace to support them or, you know, something on that order. So just use your magnet and a little common sense and you figure out which direction your beams are going, where your, or excuse me, which way your floor joists are going, where your beams are at and you can find the screws by you just using a little magnet, okay? So, so it takes a little bit of time to figure it out if you don't want to rip all the sheetrock down, but um, it's not too difficult.